Hello again. Now, ocean temperatures are at their highest in years. The EU's climate change service, Copernicus, says temperatures have soared above 20 degrees Celsius. This impacts the planet negatively because warm waters are unable to absorb carbon dioxide. This means more of the planet warming gas will stay up there in the atmosphere. For more on this, I'm joined now by Francois Engelbrecht from VETS Global Change Institute. Prof, good afternoon. Welcome to today. And thank you very much for joining us on this Women's Day here on ENCA. What are the challenges now? What are the dangers that are posed by higher ocean temperatures? Good afternoon and thank you for having me. Yes, the oceans are so important in the climate system because they in fact regulate the entire climate system. They have such a pronounced effect on weather patterns. Here where we live in Southern Africa, we are of course very familiar with the effects of the El Nino, La Nina cycle in the Pacific Ocean that impacts our weather quite significantly during summer periods in, in Southern Africa. As the oceans are getting warmer and warmer, there will therefore be consequences in terms of weather patterns worldwide. Stronger El Nino systems can, for example, lead to more prolonged drought and a higher frequency of heat waves here in Southern Africa. We're, of course, just now currently lagging these big heat waves occurring in the Northern Hemisphere, but we should be very concerned in Southern Africa about what will happen in our own upcoming summer in terms of unprecedented heat. The other aspect that makes the ocean so important, of course, is the fact that rising sea surface temperatures contribute to the melting of the Greenland ice sheet and also the, the Antarctic ice sheet, specifically the West Antarctic ice sheet, and glaciers worldwide. So a warmer ocean also means higher sea levels. Warm water also simply expands and takes up more space. So a warmer ocean is also an ocean associated with higher um, sea levels, a big, big risk for humanity as we move deeper into the century. And then finally, there are so many impacts of the ocean on ecosystems, uh, different marine species, uh, the, coral, the coral reefs that are bleaching as a direct consequence of these higher temperatures. So widespread ecosystem impacts in the ocean. Uh, let me also finally add that the warmer we make the ocean, the less effective it becomes to absorb carbon dioxide. So the ocean is so efficient in absorbing all this heat that we are generating as humans through the carbon dioxide being emitted into the atmosphere. So not only does the ocean absorb some of the carbon dioxide, it also absorbs about 90% of the human generated heat in the, in the Earth system. So in that way, the oceans are protecting us as humans in terms of atmospheric warming. But gradually, the evidence is now mounting that the ocean is starting to release larger quantities of that heat back into the atmosphere, which means that the global warming process may accelerate even further. And because of that, there will be concerns, therefore, about how high the temperatures could become uh, as we move uh, forward, because it doesn't seem we're making a dent at all into uh, changing our, our behavior. <laughs> Global warming has caught up with us over the last two months. And it's catching up first with those living in the Northern Hemisphere because it's summertime there now. And of course, we've seen these unprecedented heat waves across the United States into Southern Europe and the Mediterranean, into Asia, including China. Widespread, unprecedented heat in the Northern Hemisphere during June and July this year. These, um, these temperature records are astounding. The, the July average temperature for the world is, of course, an all-time record in, in the historical record that we have. Um, it was also the first month uh, for, that during for an entire month, we were 1.5 degrees Celsius above the so-called pre-industrial temperature of the planet. And um, we are getting a taste here of future global warming impacts on humanity. We should be really concerned. I think if this El Nino is going to be a strong one, and right now the predictions are that it, that it will be somewhere between moderate and strong. So if it's going to be on the strong side, it's possible that in Southern Africa, we will also see 
all-time temperature records being broken this upcoming summer, so specifically from, say, November through to February. And that will bring pr pronounced, pronounced risks to us in Southern Africa, firstly for our people living in informal settlements where there's not easy access to cool water. In this type of scenario, heat waves are literally life-threatening. Also impacts on our agriculture. Our crops are so vulnerable in Southern Africa when heat waves occur in combination with below normal rainfall. Unfortunately, for as long as global warming continues, these risks will just continue to increase across the world, including here in our own region. So we do expect a stronger or more intense El Nino effect, and that means higher, higher temperatures, as you say, in, in, in our part of the world. And that could lead as well to more severe stormy weather. I'm thinking about cyclones, Prof, because uh, cyclone season tends to be around the beginning of the year, January, February. We've just seen uh, Cyclone Freddy just uh, a few months ago, which was the longest lasting uh, uh, cyclone kind of system we've seen in, the, in, in history in Southern Africa. This is correct. So we are facing here uh, the risk of an exceptionally warm summer. The warmest summer on record in Southern Africa is the summer of 2015-16, and viewers may remember that as being a period of pronounced drought in Southern Africa. And these temperature records were set during a strong El Nino event. In fact, the strongest El Nino on record was the El Nino of the summer of 2015-16. Now, the main risk during El Nino years is of course drought um, below normal rainfall coupled with heat waves that impact on crops on water security directly on our health usually we expect a higher risk of tropical cyclone landfall during the opposite part of the cycle so during la nina events now our previous three summers were all la nina summers and of course tropical cyclone freddy the second most deadly cyclone in the history of Africa occurred in February last year. And as you've said, it's the longest living tropical cyclone on record worldwide. Unfortunately, we are not safeguarded against tropical cyclone landfall during El Nino years. Um, cyclones can reach Southern Africa and they can be devastating during El Nino years. And the best example of this is tropical cyclone Idai that impacted on Mozambique back in March 2019, more than 1,500 people lost their lives in that cycle. So we need to know that our regional oceans are also getting warmer. And that, of course, is the ideal recipe to make tropical cyclones more intense. Right now, most of the marine heat waves are in the northern hemisphere. So, for example, we've had a big heat wave occurring in the North Atlantic Ocean. Then there was this heat wave event in the Mediterranean. Around Florida, the ocean temperatures reached 58, more than 58 degrees Celsius um, about a week ago. What will the El Nino do if it's strong? And how will it impact on our regional sea surface temperatures this upcoming summer? I think it's a major concern for all of us living in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and tropical cyclones indeed systematically are becoming more intense and they are causing more rainfall than in the past because of global warming. This is true for most parts of the world, but it's also true for the Southern African region. Yeah, so we should brace ourselves for a hotter summer and more severe stormy weather uh, because of, uh, of climate change. Finally, Prof, and very brief if you may, I mean, as the temperatures are rising in the oceans, you did say they affect the ecosystems. And many of us in the human race, we also uh, feed from the ocean. And that's likely to affect uh, uh, many species uh, in, the, in the seas. Absolutely. And let me just say, um, the main risk for us in Southern Africa this upcoming summer remains drought, right? Let me just make that very clear. That is the main risk, drought and heat waves. But let's also be aware of the possibility of intense cyclones making landfall specifically in Mozambique this upcoming summer. But to answer your question, yes, um, as soon as sea surface temperatures 
rise to uncomfortable levels for so many marine species. Those species that can mi migrate, tend to migrate in the southern hemisphere to more southerly locations into cooler waters. And this means that entire ecosystems and entire food chains can get disrupted by marine heat waves that occur in this warmer world. And I think in Southern Africa, an important question that is not properly explored is how global warming will systematically impact specific, specifically on our West Coast fisheries. So these wonderful fishing areas we have in the cold ocean waters along the coast of Angola, Namibia, and Southern Africa, South Africa specifically, the so-called upwelling region in what is known as the Benguela current. How will these fisheries be increasingly impacted by higher sea surface temperatures in a warmer world? I think that is a, a regional risk that is not fully understood and that we should also be concerned about as the world continues to warm. Thank you very much, Professor Engelbrecht from Vets Global Change Institutions.